to the Wildcat Watch, your weekly look at what's going on Baker University. I'm Sumana Nunez. Senior Mikey Wilson has big dreams when it comes to music, and thanks to YouTube, he's starting to build up a fan base. KMBU's Steven Stendebach recently sat down with Mikey to talk about his success. How did you get started with music? Uh, I've been playing guitar for about 11 years. Uh, just started off with an acoustic, and Ah, I just fell in love with the sound, fell in love with the art, so I just kept going at it. Uh, never learn to read music. I can't read notation. I look, okay, a little bit of piano notation, but that's it. So what is the name of your band? Uh, my band is called Sweet Ascent. Uh, do you know how many views your last music video got? Uh, last time I checked, we were at 4,500. And what song did you choose? Uh, we uh, recorded a cover video of Katy Perry's Wide Awake. And why did you choose that song? <laughs> uh, I apologize to any Katy Perry fans that uh, you know, but um, the way we like to do things is like uh, we think a, a cover of a song should be taking a really bad song and making it good. So Katy Perry's Wide Awake, oh not necessarily a bad song, was our choice. Um, we actually retired that, that song at our last venue at the Granada and are looking at covering possibly a One Direction song or a Justin Bieber song <laughs> next, so. What was your reaction to the success of the video? I was elated. I, 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 I was floored. Like, uh, I've been in a band before, but I, I, I could never imagine the success that we're having. Have you seen any reactions from people to the video? Oh yeah, it's like, uh, especially in like, a, like uh, crowd, crowd attendance. Um, at our last show at the Granada, uh, the, the majority of people that came to see us came because they saw the video. We had 50, 60 plus people come out just to see us. How do you see music being in your future? Forever. Uh, as, as long as I can keep my hands you know, in working condition, uh, it, it'll be with me forever. To listen to the entire interview, go to youtube.com backslash media or visit thebakerorange.com. While the weather is slowly warming up, it is likely class participation will start to deplete. But before you skip class to enjoy the sunshine, you may want to listen to Brad Barnes to see how much money you're skipping out on. Skipping class is something that nearly every college student does. Now there is always the issue of catching up on work you missed out on or maybe even the participation points you lost for that day. But one thing students don't think about is the effect that skipping class has on their wallet. I talked to University Controller Melissa Van Leiden and she broke the numbers down for us. Baker Tuition runs each student about $12,200 each semester. Divide that by 16 weeks in the semester and again by the average of 15 hours that each student takes. This means that each class session is costing you $50. So next time you're getting that extra hour of sleep, remember what those 60 minutes are costing you. While $50 may not seem like much, here are some other things you could be doing with that money. At $3.37 a gallon, you could buy nearly 15 gallons of gas, enough to fill most cars, or you could take your $50 and a date on a marvelous trip to Lawrence to catch a bite and see a movie. The choice is yours, but remember, every decision has its consequences. I'm Brad Barnes. Up next, some football talk and the Baker Bee are on the way. But first, let's check out what's happening on the Baker campus.
The 2013 NFL season is still many months away, but that doesn't stop fans from discussing who's going to be in the Super Bowl next year. KMBU TV's Ryan Poe leads our discussion in this week's roundtable. Which NFL team do y'all think had the best free agency pickup? Um, personally, for me, looking into it, I'm looking at the Houston, Texas, picking up, picking up Ed Reed. Uh, personally, because Ed Reed brings great leadership to a team. Um, as you saw in the previous season in the Super Bowl, Ed Reed had uh, great leadership skills in the uh, field, made great plays, and he just brings that versatility to a team. And Jalen? I would have to say Percy Harvin going to the Seahawks. Uh, Percy Harvin was the Vikings' best overall athlete. Adrian Peterson even said it. And just, I can see Pete Carroll just doing a lot of things with Percy Harvin. He's very talented, very diverse. He can do anything on, on the football field. A lot of players ended up in uh, a lot of weird places this year. So what do y'all think uh, about the prediction for this year's Super Bowl? Um, I'm going to have to go with NFC. I'm going to have to go with the Atlanta Falcons. And for the AFC, I'm going to choose the Denver Broncos, just solely based on what I saw last season and then the um, new additions that they added this season. Well, I'm either going to I'm gonna stick with my NFC pick with the San Francisco 49ers and Houston Texans. I'm pretty think it's going to be a great year for football this year. Okay. Now, I know both of you had your own personal teams. Um, let's start with the, the Kansas City Chiefs, Jalen. Uh, what do you see uh, happening for them this year? I see great things for the Kansas City Chiefs. Starting from the bottom up, they've completely changed everything. They have a new general manager, new head coach, new quarterback. And they brought in a lot of talent with uh, Sean Smith from the Dolphins, Dunta Robinson from the Falcons. J just secondary, top 10 defense, great running back. We're ready. This is our year. Um, based on my picks, I'm not biasly choosing the Atlanta Falcons, but um, just looking at what they have to offer, I mean, that receiving core with Julio Jones and Roddy White is just absolutely unstoppable for corners. I mean, it's going to be trouble for coaches to make a game plan around that. And then obviously bringing in Steven Jackson from the uh, St. Louis Rams, that was a very good addition to the team. Quick, what was the name of the largest object ever built to fly? It was three football fields long and 12 stories high. Too late. With the answer to that and other general knowledge questions, here's Ashley Payne with this week's Baker Beat. What's the capital of Montana? Billings. I don't know. Oh, <laughs> um, Capital Montana, Montana, I believe, is Billings. Billings. Who is the founder of Apple? Steve, Steve Jobs. Jobs. Uh, Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak. Um, Bill Gates. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Name the body of water that's so salty that almost nothing can live in it. Um, Dead Sea. The Dead Sea, right? The Dead Sea. The largest man-made object ever to fly that would blew up in New Jersey in 1937, killing 35 people. I believe, uh, what is the Hindenburg? Uh, was it the Hindenburg? Good job. Who are the two Wright brothers? Orville and, let's see. Oh. Orville, right? And yeah. I don't either. <laughs> Orville and um, John. Uh, uh, Orville and I can't remember the other one's name. Cat Watch. I'm Sumana Nunez. Thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time. You're